guys, welcome back to my channel. That's not really a channel, but it's going to become one. Um, today we're going to be trying to pull an engine out of a 1975 classic mini. I think. I don't know. <laughs> we'll give it so this is the subject car we're going to be pulling the engine from today. This is my 1975 Clubman Mini. Uh, built in South Africa at the Cape Town plant. It's got some JDM inspired rims. 13 inches. Wrapped in Yokohama's. A530 nines, as you can see. And then here we come to the, the block, most important thing of the car. Um, it's a 1275 Big Bore from Cape Town as well, obviously. Apparently with a Cooper S head. So it's really got good compression. I mean, we're talking 9.5 plus bar on each cylinder. So that wasn't bad at all. And then I've got obviously your mini spares, three core radiator, which is a must in this climate because we get properly hot here. And yeah, let's try to take this out. Well, first things first, resolve. you want to make sure that your battery is disconnected, which mine is a little bit messy here, but hey, it does the job. Um, let's make sure that's disconnected. And then we want to move to the front of the car. And we're going to make sure that our solenoid is disconnected so we can obviously pull the engine out. So while well, your clutch is sitting here, I think this is called your clutch stopper or something like that. I don't know what the name is, but so this doesn't touch us when you're pulling it out. So you're going to want to disconnect all your connections from your solenoid and take a picture of it before, otherwise you are going to forget what you're doing. Uh, so I've done that. And you're going to want to disconnect all the ancillaries, all the things, if you want to call them that, in the engine bay. So obviously your ground cable um, from your coil to your distributor and possibly even take your alternator off. I think I might, I'm not exactly sure, we'll see. And clutch master cylinder is gonna have to come off. And slave cylinder, well, that one, whoops. And obviously to pull that, otherwise we're gonna pull some cables. Also the speedo cable, don't forget to take the speedo cable off. Uh, probably clipping, unclipping it from the inside of the car will be the best bet so that when you pull the engine up, you don't have to play down there, which is not fun. And well, first things first though, let's strain the oil. That's always a good start. So now we're under the engine bay, or under the car, should I say. Um, and here we are sitting at the bottom of the gearbox and engine, which share the same sum. You're gonna take off this plug here to drain the oil, as one does when you drain the oil. And yeah, hopefully you can get that right. So I'm going to be using a 24 mil socket. Um, I don't work in Imperial tools here. I've only got a few. Uh, this country, we don't we don't use those funny things. We don't use maple syrup and leaves or flying eagles. No, mm -mm. we use these things, the right the right ones. And it's called a bonnet, not a hood, and a boot, not a trunk. So yeah, <laughs> let's give it a bash. Now that our oil has been drained, pretty much, I mean, that's not gonna do much. So let's put the plug back in. Uh, get in there. Get in there. Ah, that's what she said. Lol. So let's put that in. I'll tighten that just now, but that's alright for now. Now I think what we should do is disconnect all your electrics on the car. Stupid your positive wire coming in, your negative side of your, I'm not sure, distributor, wow. Your solenoid, positive side coming in from the battery, your negative side of the solenoid going to your starter motor, and then your ground. Um, from coil to distributor, watch these, watch these cables, these HT leads, and possibly your alternator. Um, the rest of it actually isn't in the way, so yeah, let's do that. <laughs> So, taking this off, that's loose. The one side of the engine mount, not on the engine mounting, engine steadier. What I'm also going to do is actually going to take this off here, which I think could help quite a bit more, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 
because then once this is off, I can essentially just pull this whole bracket off and loosen the engine. Oh look, the dog's actually sitting still. Wow, that's a change. So let's take this off. <clears throat> So there's one off. There, that's loose. Now let's get this off here. Oof. Noise. Okay, so next thing we want to do is I've taken off the engine steady and actually just took off the breather from the crankcase. Uh, crankcase? Or no, crankcase is that side. Anyway, from here, um, and just slid it around because this bolt is being stubborn. So next, what we want to do is actually go in the car here. It's a little bit tough for you guys to see, but I guess let's give it a bash. Um, gonna have to come under here, and yeah, there we go. Yeah, I can see. Disconnect your clear linkage, as you can see, mine's holding by a, a little screw. That's not the greatest, but anyway. So that one, and then. Once this is, now this is loose, as you can see, that can move, or you can leave it like that for now. And then up top here, the, I think this is the stereo, just the, basically a gearbox stereo. And you can loosen that, and then you know, try and get off these pots here. But I think I'm going to try to lift the engine first and see if they can have a little bit of space. And then after we've done that, we're going to take the engine bolts, engine mount bolts out and actually attach the lift and see what we can do. So I'm back down underneath the car with two spanners. I've got a 716s or 718s, which it definitely isn't. So now, oh my gosh, look at these dogs. Anyway, so now let's take this out. This is where a ratchet spanner would come in handy. So now these bolts are out, so this is loose. So when we start lifting, this can actually be it will come loose. So I think now what we're going to do is take off the engine mount bolts, which I can actually do while I'm down here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, probably just going to get a ratchet there. But, oh, wrong size. But yeah, so that's going to be the next thing. So we'll start with here, then we'll just move on right here. We'll just do both of them. I think here we got. Yeah, there we go, here we've got half inch, so but yeah, we can take these legs off and get this done while we are down here, and yeah, let's do that. So I've taken out the engine mount bolts, uh, as you can see, here's two, one, two, and here are the two bolts from here, this side, one, two. Um, this side still has studs sticking out, and that side doesn't. But yeah, so now I think we're just gonna get the crane on and then pull and see what I'm gonna do with these CV boots. CV boots, just the the pot joints. So as you can see, this thing is nice and loose. So once we start pulling it up, I guess we'll oh whoops, that's you. Once we start pulling it up, I guess we'll find out how it's gonna how it's gonna look. So I'm gonna take off the valve cover and yeah. Let's have a look and find out. It's a 16. And get this off here. Okay. It's gonna form there we go. Look at that, perfectly made for a coffee cup. Great. So so now this is off. Now I can see where we're going to want to attach to lift this engine. So I'm under the impression that it's going to attach here, that I can use these two studs to lift it. So I guess we're going to give that a try and see from there. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use this cable. Ah, here it is. So essentially just strap and strap and get some washers and then just pull it up or from the head studs which wouldn't be a bad idea either so maybe from the head studs we'll, we'll have a look now 
So I've found some washers what we're going to do and to lift it. But we're going to use this over here. One, two, on the cylinder head and unscrew these and bolt these down and then lift it. Hopefully it goes according to plan. So here's a configuration that in pretty much any case that this cannot come loose. So it's a combination of some washers. Let me show you what it did. Is here's my washer kit. I'm gonna use some washers from down here. Um, because your main concern would be while we're lifting this engine and this obviously comes free so i'm gonna strap that there let's just put another just put another washer down while we add it let's put one down there strap this there and put one over like that and a big washer over like this so that covers essentially the surface area well, let's put one let's put this down here just like that so we know it's got the whole thing covered then we can put another washer of pressure over here, like that. And then a smaller washer on top of that, so it should work, like that. So now the bolt can catch this top washer and put pressure on the bottom ones so that my car doesn't go falling, well not my car, so the engine doesn't come falling, crashing down while we're lifting it, which is, won't be great. So yeah, that's basically an impromptu engine lifting method that I've just, nobody told me about it, but yeah, it's not going anywhere. Let's just tighten this back down here. Let's see how that, this is holding up. This looks good, that's not going anywhere. So I guess let's bring the lift in and start jacking it. Right, so we've loosened everything. The two engine mounts on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. I uh, still need to take out these pot joints, but I'm gonna pull the engine a bit so I can give them a bit of wriggle, wriggle room. And I've done this, put them on the two, these two studs here where the valve cover bolts onto. They had the manual, the manual I think Haynes says, there's a special tool that bolts onto these four, but I've seen Oaks just using these two and Actually, people using the spark plugs on a Cole Classic Mini DIY, he uses special special bolts that he's made up that fit into the two number four, number one of the spark plugs here, and he pulls it from there. So it's very doable, not a heavy motor, so it's not the end of the world. So I'm going to actually touch the crane, engine crane, and yeah, give it a bit of a lift, and then go down underneath and tap the, the pot joints out, so we'll see if we can. Yeah, so the engine's out, as we can see, it is hanging by the hoist, which has worked really well. Um, so I don't even know when this engine was last taken out of this car, probably a couple years back, because when I bought it, I bought this car, what, two years ago, I think it is now, two, three years, two years ago, yeah. Um, the guy said this is a motor from a 1275, or from a 1275 GTS, which it is. It's actually the Cooper S head and very similar parts to the Cooper S motor, but I don't think it's a Cooper S block. But anyway, so ugh, stuff looks pretty decent, but I'm not really sure the rest of the stuff. So I'm going to see where it's leaking. Well, not see, I know exactly where it is leaking from. It's leaking from where these drive shafts connect in here on the, um, on the differential sides. That side and that side. So I'm going to have to try to find basically seals or gaskets for those, which I've got two gearboxes there, so I might be able to steal from them. But yeah, just a once over, we're gonna definitely have a once over in this engine. Repaint it, definitely, because it's looking a bit shite if you ask me. And yeah, it actually wasn't too bad to get it out. Considering I'm not even a, of course not a professional or qualified mechanic, I'm just a focus studying engineering and likes cars. But yeah, I mean, definitely give this a bit of a fresh up because it's not looking the most presentable way or in the best manner at all. So yeah, got some decent work. At least we're using this lockdown. But yeah, that's pretty much what our plan was for today. And to be honest, I can say job successful. So yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you on the flip side.